Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back to another episode. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about a very important topic. Um, one that you probably already know what it is because you clicked on the thumbnail and you clicked on the video. So you, you know what we're going to be talking about. And that's money. That's right. Because a lot of us forget with the, the whole enthusiasm of, uh, hey, I want to move out here and live out here and escape and whatever, all that crap. Um, a lot of people forget, you know, the very obvious, oh, wait a minute, how am I going to make money? You're fired. How am I going to, you know, have some income and all that good stuff. And so I decided to make this video. Uh, now, usually, you know, I go on my walks or I, I go on a bike ride, but I feel like this subject's a little bit more, uh, you know, something I got to have a little bit more, uh, I don't know, I got some notes, all right? So I got to you know, make sure I know um, what I'm talking about so I can't be huffing and puffing and all that good stuff. So, all right, let's get into it. Now, this video is probably not going to be for the people out there that are getting a pension, you know, or some sort of retirement or whatever. You know, if you already got some income, if you already have income, you're good. This is for everybody else that doesn't have any income and needs to figure out their income stream so they can live out here. Because the thing is that, remember, this is a question that gets asked a lot, and there's so many misconceptions out there. There's so many people out there that just think that, oh, they'll come to Mexico and they'll just get a job here. Now, again, depending on where you're from, if you're watching this video, that's not gonna apply to you. Um, but for a lot of people, they come from you know other countries out there um, in which the wage out here in Mexico is actually way better than where they're from. Yeah, yeah, they can get a job out here and all that stuff. But for anyone else that comes from a first world country, again, watching this video, um, for sure, no matter what job you get out here, um, it's, it's not gonna pay you um, even close to enough to what you're used to. So the whole idea of like, oh, I'm just gonna go out there and get a job or you know get some you know, whatever job, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, I'll work at a restaurant or I'll work, uh, um, you know, doing some construction work or just do any kind of job that a Mexican's doing. Look, trust me, you're, no, you know what I mean? And, and whatever wage they get for any low medial job is somewhere around $250 a month. And sure, you know, you can live off of, you know, somewhere around the $300 range, you know, the $400 range a month. But again, it's not like uh, you're gonna be um, living it up. You know, you're gonna be definitely struggling just as much as you're struggling back home. But like, hey, hey, it's around 300 bucks a month, that's not bad. But you're gonna be definitely struggling really bad just like you're doing back home. So, you know, I, I advise a lot of people to, at the very least, you know, have like around a thousand US dollars so that you can live out here pretty comfortably, as comfortably as it can possibly get for someone coming from the United States, Canada, whatever, someone that's used to the first world and they want their first world comforts, okay? Like a washing machine, um, a water heater, um, you, you know what I'm saying? Uh, things like, uh, uh, how do I say It's like air conditioning in uh, certain climates like where I live out here in the heat um, and so on and so forth. So, or you know, uh, whatever whatever tickles your pickle you know not every mexican um just like you know a lot of people around the world they don't have all the luxuries that you have that we're used to and we get um accustomed to so you know out here that's like a major situation you know that you have to you know make some sacrifices but anyways that's not what this video is about this video is about you know how to make money out here we're going to talk about it i got a bunch of options i got a bunch of things out here but this is a few things that i need to get out the way First of all, um, I'll probably put a link down below, you know, um, for the whole, you know, section so you can speed up ahead. Whatever, it's already too late. It's already like four minutes in. Bruh. I know, I suck at making these videos, right? Anyways, don't worry. You don't need to remind me down in the comments how horrible I am. Um, so again, like I said, you know, if you're coming out here thinking you're going to get a job, and I would, you know, that's not going to end up well and, you know, it's not going to end up in your favor. Now, you can probably get a job out here, you know, some corporate job working for some giant corporate entity working a lot and making some sort of uh, salary that you could be used to up in the corporate world or even in the low end of the corporate world in the U.S. But out here, remember, the, your money goes a long way. So you could get something like that, but that's in the rare case. All right, in fact, let me talk about real quick before I get too deep into the job options. Um, let's get into like what the average salary for someone out here is. Because again, that, that way it'll put things into perspective. So a lot of people, I, I mean, I recently got an email um, and I get a lot of emails like this, all right? So I'm not trying to point anybody out there, all right? So don't be feeling special. Um, but anyways, and they were basically saying, uh, actually it wasn't an email, I think it was in a comment or something, but I digress. By the way, I got uh, shirts now uh, to say I digress uh, on my website um, at the shop. All the links are down below. Maybe I'll show you one here. 
whatever. Okay, anyway, so let's get back into it. And they were asking me, hey, how does someone live out here on a $5,000 um, salary? No, not salary. I mean, how does someone live out here on $5,000 a month as opposed to $2,000 a month? And uh, I don't really didn't know how to answer that question. I just said, oh, from very comfortably to super luxurious. And let me explain. If you're making anything over 40,000 pesos a month, which is the equivalent to like around 2,000 US dollars a month, you're in the top 1% of monthly earners in Mexico, okay? So again, if you're making over $2,000 or if you're bringing in over $2,000, you're in the top 1%. So again, just go, and we're not talking about immigration, but when it comes to that, again, guys, you know, don't, don't be worrying about a few pennies here and there, okay? You're gonna be fine. They're, they're a little loosey-goosey. We're gonna be talking more about that in future episodes, okay? Like I promise, we have interviews coming up with lawyers and all that good stuff. All right, I digress. That's all right, now I, now I feel like every time I say it, um, I gotta pop the shirt on. Anyways, I should get a shirt. Um, I will get a shirt. Okay, let's get into it. Um, so if you're, in the, if you're making over 40,000 pesos, you're in the top 1%. That's it, period, in the story. That's every Mexican. So. If you're making somewhere in the 30,000 peso range, which is, again, $1,500 a month, that is in the, you know, high end, okay? That's in the higher end of the, the whole spectrum here of, uh, you know, of wage earners across Mexico. If you're making somewhere around 10K, you know, 10,000 pesos to 15,000 pesos, which is around 500 to $750, give or take, um, you're in, you know, you're pretty much like medium, all right, you're in the uh, like middle class. All right, that will be middle class. If you're making thirty, like if you're making like a thousand five hundred or above, you're in the high middle class. If you're making like around five to seven fifty, you're in the middle class. And then low end is somewhere like ten thousand pesos, eight thousand pesos. You know, that's you know low end. And there's people out there that make even lower than that. All right, a lot lower than that. Like you know, even like five thousand, six thousand pesos and stuff like that. And uh, and they get and they live out here. You know, again, that's on the low, low end. Again, five thousand pesos is two hundred fifty dollars. All right, some people make only that. But if you're living in a pueblo, you're living in certain areas. It's not a big deal. That's that's pretty all right. Um, you're middle class basically in a sense, or right? <laughs> low middle class. Um, but um, but five thousand pesos in the city is not much. Um, you need to be making more. So that's like a like a real thing. Um, but again. Now you understand where you fit in and, and you know, now you got the, the, the wages out of the way because a lot of people out here, you guys are so scared about coming out here with only a thousand five hundred US dollars a month. And I'm like, again, that's in the, you're in the high end. All right. You're in the high wage earners. All right. So, and, and what do I mean by high wage earners? Again, you can like an engineer, um, someone in politics, someone in whatever, you know, um, politics probably making a lot more than that. Um, but anyways, but you feel me, um, just in general, you know what I mean? Like, uh, anyone that's like, uh, the, the head of a corporate job. So that's another thing too. Like you come out here and you get like a high end, you know, job that you finally do. Let's say you, you work at a, you know, you're like the main head translator for the Hyatt, um, for the Cancun area. You're probably going to be getting paid like around $2,000. You feel me? But you're on the high end. You're in the top one percent. Maybe two thousand five hundred dollars. I don't know. But that's like, but still, what the hell is two hundred five hundred dollars? That's like a that's like a McDonald's salary or something back home. No, actually, it's not a McDonald's salary. I don't know. Is it? I already know what they earn these days, but I think it's a lot less than that. Um, but anyways, I let's get down to it. <laughs> I'm still gonna say it. All right, I'm still gonna say it. Just uh, you know, a little bit more uh, obvious on that. I digress there. I think I'm gonna do like the Pee Wee's Playhouse. I digress. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you already know. Don't be coming out here without an income. Don't be coming out here without a plan. You know, you might not have an income. Look, I came out here without an income. I came out here with $1,500 to my name, but I did have a way of making money. And we're gonna discuss that soon okay in a, on a few seconds actually real soon um but at, but at the end of the day you got to come out here with some sort of plan one where don't be coming out here thinking that you know it's just gonna land or you're gonna get some benefits from the government or some crazy things like that yes i do get emails that say hey when i get to mexico how do i apply for benefits so i can get benefits in mexico like from mexico and it's, it's like no that's not how it works you know it's like mexico ain't give me mexico's the benefit is you get to live here <laughs> that's it all right, okay, so let's get into it. 
All right, let's get into, you know, uh, the uh, job options because, you know, like I said, you know, there are options. And now more than ever, you know, three years ago, this would have been a little bit more difficult, but still doable. Again, I've been here three and a half, almost four years, you know, definitely, you know, close to, you know, on the three and a half, over three and a half years. We're going to go with that. All right, so I've been here over three and a half years. And um, when I came out here, like I said, I came in, came out with 1500 bucks to my name. And all I did was doing little gigs on Craigslist. Um, I edit videos. In fact, let me play a little bit of uh, what I do. My name is Johnny Jackson. I'm a proud biracial American athlete. When you say Action Jackson, make sure you put some respect on it. There are a few alias names that I go by. Action, Ninja. The latest that my gym has been calling me is Mongoose. There's that, and art is such a community. There's so many people that appreciate it, that show up to different events. There's the artists themselves, and that that's really my favorite community. Like sharing, sharing tips, sharing inspiration, um, making connections and networking together, just making friends that understand, you know, what we're going through, how we feel about things. Um, even just painting around other artists, which Yes, I don't do that anymore, but that's what I used to do. I used to be a chef and then I started doing the, this, you know, editing videos and getting into, you know, making YouTube stuff and all that. Um, but eventually I just did it for myself. But I used to live in LA and work off of gigs. I used to, you know, get hired to do all kinds of videos for all kinds of people, for Instagram, for, you know, for YouTube, uh, for movies, for whatever. And that's what I worked off. So I remember in LA, I was barely making rent. You know what I mean? I was barely making money doing that. And I said, well, I can live in Mexico off of that. You know what I mean? So that's what I did. I just came out to Mexico and that was my plan. My plan to ha was to have a bunch of gigs online. All right. Um, now, this is one of the options, but I'm just segueing straight into it. Um, but one of the main option that you can have is you can find gigs that you can do online. I mean, very simply, again, if you want to work for yourself, like I think a lot of you guys do, you know, you want to have more sovereignty over you, you and yourself and, and your work schedule. Um, you can get jobs online. And what do I mean? I mean, first of all, we're going to go to the jobs online. We're going to discuss that in a second. But before that, let's talk about the gigs online. That's not, you're not working nine to five or anything like that. You don't have a schedule. Um, this is more like your gigs. So I used to just go to Craigslist. All right. And I used to go to L.A., you know, a bunch of places, you know, and then just go through certain sections in Craigslist and look for people that, you know, needed people to, you know, needed someone to edit their videos. And I would just simply say, hey, look, I work remote. I charge cheaper than anybody else because I didn't need to charge as much living out here. And um, and I would usually get all the jobs because I, I, you know, my work would speak for itself. And then I would simply um, just land these jobs, you know, because, well, you know what I mean? Like, um, again, I was the cheapest and I was and I did the job just as good or better than the other people that, you know, were my competition um, for that kind of gig. And so I just got the gigs and then, then that's it. I would just edit all kinds of random things. And uh, and that was enough until I found other ways to make money out here. You know, which again, we've already talked about in the last episode, which is now I do the services and I do other things, you know what I mean? Um, there's a bunch of things, the people that know me, but I like to keep a little bit of that private and that's the whole thing, you know, uh, the sovereignty over, you know, you and your, uh, your money and how you make your money. But anyways, you can work on Fiverr, you can work on Upwork, you can work on Freelancer, Craigslist, Outsourcely. I don't know, this is just a bunch of random um, places where you can literally put your services up, you know, for hire and people can hire you for, again, it doesn't have to be editing videos. It can be anything, anything. There's so many jobs. Check out Fiverr, check out all this stuff. There's a bunch of gigs that you can do. You know, again, check out Craigslist. I mean, seriously, seriously, seriously. Okay. Um, you can even sell pictures of your feet. All right. If that's what you're into, Bruh. I'm just saying there's a bunch of things you could do. I know. I went a little bit too far there, T TMI. But look, the point I'm making is, no, I don't sell foot pics. Do I? You are fake news. 
<laughs> the point I'm making is that there's a bunch of things that you can do like that, okay? In which you can earn money enough to survive out here. Because again, if you, for if you're making anywhere from 750 to to a thousand dollars, you know, somewhere in that range, you're basically middle class or you know lower middle class. So you don't need to make much. All right. And that's for everything. That's all your expenses. All right. So let's just keep that in mind. Um, so you can do online gigs. That's one option. Another option is that you can just work online. Like, especially now more than ever, you know, in this world that we're living in, uh, you know, let's not get into that. Uh, but yeah, at the end of the day, you can work online. I mean, simply just go work online. In fact, look, I found this, I did a little homework for you guys because I know how everyone hates to do their own research and do homework and all that stuff. So down below, all right, I put a link, all right, in which you can watch this other video and um, there's a bunch of other links there in which you can see a bunch of places that are always hiring. All right, they're always hiring, okay? Um, there's a bunch of places that, again, just see if you wanna get like a normal nine to five type job, it might be five to nine, I don't know, whatever. The point is, is that there's, you know, a bunch of jobs like that, that you can do, you can get, um, that are very good. You know what I mean? Like, I'm um, just, again, you can work for U-Haul. I keep saying this a lot. I don't know of anyone out there really that's ever gotten uh, a job like this, but I know they exist. But you can, you know, work customer service for U-Haul. There's a lot of people moving around now in the USA. Um, and when you're calling U-Haul, you need a, someone that's American, okay? to be on the other end, okay? To help you with certain things that only an American will know. Um, so there's a bunch of jobs that you can do. You can do, again, a lot, just, I don't know. There's just a bunch of jobs in the sense of like, uh, um... Darling, I've told you several times before, I have no dream job, I do not dream of labor. Work, I don't know, I don't do any of that stuff, okay? And, but, but there's tons of work, there's tons of jobs, and especially now more than ever, where again, a lot of people working remotely and all this other stuff. And so, oh, by the way, a lot of people are, are asking, because this is where this pertains to. Um, you, okay, how do I work at an American job doing XYZ while living in Mexico? Very simply, you get a VPN. All right, first of all, it shouldn't be a problem, okay, number one. Number two, if it is, again, you just, the VPN. What is a VPN? A VPN, first of all, do a little research, figure it out. But VPN is a very simple thing that helps you route your internet, meaning that you're in Mexico, but, you know, when you're online, the, the internet thinks that you're coming from the USA or from somewhere else, okay? So basically, each country has their own internet and you access whatever internet is appropriate to you. So in this case, you wouldn't need to, to you, uh, you went full retard, man. Sorry. <laughs> so in this case, you would need to access the US internet. We've talked about this multiple times. A lot of times you need to access the US internet if you wanna watch certain things on Netflix, if you need to access certain things on your, you know, your bank account, and I could go on and on. So, you know, once you're moving out here, one of the things that you need to learn is how, you know, working your way around the VPN and all that. It's not for everybody, you know, not every case and everyone was gonna need it, but um, I think most of you guys that eventually move out here and live out here are gonna have to learn and, and use a VPN at one point or another. It's pretty easy, it's not that hard. Um, it's just like connecting to the internet again. You know, you're already connected, but then you just connect again. And then you just connect into another internet. So it's like a double connection, that's it. But anywho, um, you know, a lot of people also have that question, you know, now that we're on it, um, because these two, this is where, you know, it ends when it comes to, to this section, you know, meaning that again, you can find work online, you know, working for a bunch of companies out there, okay? They need online employees, all right? And you can just work remotely from here, very simply, okay? Or you can, again, do online gigs. Again, it's still working online, but again, instead of getting a weekly check or, or a bi-weekly check or a monthly check or whatever, um, when it's a nine to five and it's all, you know, kind of done for you, um, working online gigs, you know, again, the Fivers, the Craigslist, the Upworks, you know, all that stuff uh, where you're doing things for other people, um, that's very different because it's your own business in a sense. Um, which is transition to the last way to make money out here. But anyways, it's kind of like your own business because you are, you know, freelancing. You know, you're a freelancer out there. Um, basically, um, you know, looking for work or posting your services for hire or what have you. All right. So um, th those, those are the two options. And so through these two options, 95% of the time, probably 100% of the time, you're going to get paid electronically and so a lot of people are like well how, how if i'm living in mexico uh my okay listen listen don't stress guys 
Look, look, it's, this is only for Americans. I don't know about any other country, but I think it pertains to other countries as well. I think it's a little different for each country. But when it comes to the U.S., you as a U.S. citizen have to pay your taxes every year, no matter what, no matter where you are on the freaking universe. You could be in, on Mars, all right? You can hop on, you know, Elon Musk, Musk uh, rocket and head out to Mars and you're going to be paying taxes out there yeah all right so don't don't get it twisted all right that's number one so basically don't matter where the hell you live okay you're still an american citizen unless you renounce your citizenship that's another story we're not even talking about that that's not even a thing right now um the point i'm making is that basically no unless you know you no matter what you have to not only declare your taxes but pay your taxes so what do i mean uh, oh, and you're an American citizen no matter where you are. So basically, I'm out here in Mexico, but it's just like I'm living in another state. That's basically how it works. It's a little more complicated, but yes and no. I mean, it's basically the same thing. And that, that, that includes basically no matter where you are. So what do I mean? If, if you are a American citizen, let's say working in England, and you're working for like the banking sector, you got like a big job or some big whatever, um, then, you know, you're getting paid through the you know, English system, you know, the system in that country. And then you got to, you know, declare that salary, pay taxes in that country, and then declare that also money that you're making to the U.S., you feel me? And you got to pay taxes there too. So you got to pay taxes do double, all right? But when you're out here, um, well, if, you're an Ameri if you are an American and you are getting paid in dollars and that money is, is, is getting routed through your banking system and in your bank account in the USA, well, it's all American. It's all USA. So you only pay taxes to the USA. So, you know, again, you're still going to pay taxes, but the taxes are just being paid to the U.S. because, well, it's just, it, that's how it's being routed. You're an American citizen. You just happen to live here, but it doesn't matter as a taxable citizen as a taxable situation um you know it all goes through you know again your american address which i've told you you got to maintain um same thing with your american uh bank because you got to get paid right how are you going to get paid if you don't have an american bank and then that money gets transferred there okay and then you pay your taxes you declare your taxes you do your taxes just like everybody else all right that's it that's it i mean basically when you're doing your taxes you just put your address in the usa again that's what you gotta have an address there all right that's another episode for another day on the whole address in the usa um a lot of times i just tell have i just tell people have a family member a trusted family member be your address or a former address or if you have a property in the u.s or you know worst case scenario you get a mail forwarding uh service okay that acts as your mailbox because you cannot use a p.o box for any of these things okay but anyways we'll make a whole episode on that in the future I digress. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah. So, that, I mean, that's how it's going to work. So, basically, you're getting paid in dollars or euros or whatever. Um, and these that, that money is worth a lot more out here. So, you only got to make a few bucks. Like I said, if you are working a regular job, you're probably in the top 1% already. No matter if you're even if you're getting paid like minimum wage. You feel me? Because even, again, you only got to you got to make over two thousand dollars a month. So I think that's basically minimum wage. I don't know. Maybe it's a little more than that, but you follow. So you know, when that money's brought out here, you're gonna be living like a king. Now, if you make money other ways, again, doesn't matter. You know, there's a bunch of ways in which you can make money. You know, outside of those two options. And again, another option is that you know you can even start your own business out here. All right, a little business um, in here, in this country or any country. But just, you know, we're sticking to Mexico as us, you know, where most of you guys are he heading for the most part. Um, but at, like, yeah, like I was saying, at the end of the day, you can even start your own little business out here. And now it's a different story, because if you have your own little business out here, um, if you're doing things electronically, you know, you're accepting electronic payments and doing that whole thing. And it's all being done through the Mexican system. Again, you got to pay taxes to Mexico and then you got to pay taxes to the USA. But. If you got a own little business out here and it could be like, let's say you're selling things on eBay or you're offering services like, like I do, you know what I mean? To, to, you know, a, a bunch of people and all that other stuff. At the end of the day, how that works is that it goes through the American system, through the U.S. and all that stuff. 
You feel me? And uh, and so therefore, you know what I mean? Like um, there's, you know, many options. You know, you can have many businesses. You know, a lot of people I know, um, like, you know, they do consulting and it's not just a consulting like what I do, okay? Because I do a certain kind of consulting, but there's people out there that do, um, you know, spiritual consulting or they do, um, you know, again, like real business consulting. You know what I mean? Like um, like like for reals because they, they work for like big corporate entities and stuff like that. My business consulting is um, uh, more like the personal, um, home business consulting, you know, more of the, you know, I used to be a restaurateur. It's a little different kind of business consulting. But again, you know, you can get, you can do a lot of things, a lot of gigs, a lot of jobs in which you can get paid. And the kicker is that if you get paid in cash here, well, I'll just leave it there. You already know the benefits of getting paid in cash. All right. So, you know, you can have your own little business. Again, I know people that sell plants all right i know people that moved out here and they basically have a little herbal culture thing and then all they do is just sell all kinds of plants you know um like seriously you know what i mean like i got a really good friend of mine out there shout out to you brother um mr brian uh, you know he's out there with his wife girlfriend you know selling uh little cactus eyes little cactus you know what I mean? And like, uh, and other things like that. You know what I mean? Like, again, yeah, I'm trying not to put too many people out there, you know, for obvious reasons, but, you know, so many people doing so many things. You know, you can come out here and sell ice cream. You can come out here and sell, um, you know, a bunch of little things. You know, do your own little thing. All right. Um, and you can even start your own little business, you know? Um, like, again, not just like a small, tiny thing out of your home, but something bigger. You know what I mean? If you want, there's many options, many options, right? In fact, we're going to be talking more about business going forward in on this channel uh, because that's a topic that I think a lot of you guys are very interested in. And um, again, we're going to have lawyers, you know, uh, that we're going to be talking to and interviewing and talking about a lot of these subjects and a lot of these things. And, um, and you know, again, helping a lot of you guys with guidance and, and not just that, but showing you, you know, um, who to turn to in order to, you know, take it to the next level. Because again, small business, you don't need much. You just got to do it. Um, but when it comes to like the bigger business, you know, any kind of storefront, any kind of anything like that that's when you're going to be needing a little bit more of uh you know a little guidance you know when it's just when it comes to like uh, maybe some lawyers or whatever um but again don't be thinking of lawyers like a bad thing you know it's more like just guidance you know things are different out here so it's just you know how to just get the right paperwork and the right thing and that's it so trust me it's a lot easier than in the u.s and a lot of first world countries where it's uh the the barrier to entry is so <laughs> wow even in a nice cool fall breezy beautiful day i have i managed to overheat the camera because there's all this hot air coming you know right at it Bruh. um but as i was saying even though the barrier to entry in most first world countries is so huge it makes it almost impossible for most people to do anything i'm out here out here it's a complete opposite so there's a lot more uh you know for you to work with and a lot more leg room and all that so all right that's it. Long enough episode, guys. If you want more information on all these things that I talked about today and then some, you already know what to do. Check out down below. Check out all the links. You can, you know, find, you know, all the jobs, a lot of the things that I was talking about um, and all this other stuff. And uh, on top of that, again, you know, um, if you need more guidance on the whole business perspective, the whole business side situation, you already know how to reach me and all that good stuff. We can go from there. Anyways, guys, you already know what's up. If you like this kind of content, you already know what to do. Don't forget to please like, please subscribe, please share, please hit that bell icon. But more importantly than anything else, please stay awesome. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.